everybody. Welcome to Live at Five. I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. And I'm Beth Stevens. And we have some news. We have a fantastic guest we in Marshall do. Stephanie Blake of Stuffed. And today, I know we've been celebrating for like two weeks now, right. but today <laughs> the is the 20th anniversary of the Lion King. So oh, congratulations congrats, to them. Lion King. Sold out yes. for 20 whole years. That's incredible. Amazing. Well, it's an amazing show. So we get true. it. Um, so we do have some news that we can jump right into, first of all. Uh, Kristen Bell, heard of her? Veronica Mars, <laughs> voice of Anna in Frozen, yes. Uh, she is reuniting, so she has this great idea for a TV show. Um, and what it is is she's reuniting castmates from high school productions of musicals, not high school musical, the Disney film. Thank you high for school, clarifying. Right? You know, there's that, that's its own thing. Uh, but she's reuniting these castmates and then giving them the opportunity to re put on the show that they did in high school. It's called Encore, it'll be on ABC. There's no date set or anything like that, it's a little ways off. But ABC is now accepting applications from cast members of high school shows that took place in the 1990s. So now they're grown ups. Now they're grown ups in the early 2000s through December 4th. So, um, if you're, you know, if that's the yeah, other accepting applications, that sounds like a fantastic idea. Um, <laughs> I'm so excited about <laughs> this show. It could go either way. It could be. Is very it going to have the same or, costumes and production values? That's. What I, I hope so. Know. I hope that's everyone has to I try to know. fit into those old costumes, use the same sets that they used. It'll be amazing. Um, wow. That's why we're not in charge of the TV show. <laughs> no, no. Were you in a high school production yeah. of anything? Um, oh, yeah, I did I'm not gonna um, tell you Once Upon a Mattress. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to have to. Luckily, we're for you, too. <laughs> yes. So that's <laughs> yes, that lucky thank process. thank God. I have good news. Yes. What We're Up Against has extended off Broadway. So this is the Teresa Reback play mm -hmm. with the Great fancy cast. cast, right? Yeah. Mark Helgenberger, Skylar Aston, Damian Young, Krista Rodriguez, and Jim Perrick. Many of them have A couple of them have been, been right here. in that's this right. little room. So it was going to play through November 26th, and now it's going to play through the, through December 3rd at the WP Theater Uptown. Uh. And we also, well, I say we, but it was really Paul Wontorek, <laughs> interviewed Mark Helgenberger. So yes. watch the Broadway.com show and learn more about it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a great show. Um, you guys, the fans, have spoken. Uh, we <laughs> asked you on Friday what the top 10 Ryan Murphy favorites, his favorite actors that he uses in all of his little shows, um, that you would like to see on Broadway. And your choices were number at number three, Leah Michelle. Obviously, totally she's been on understand. Broadway. We yeah. know that. Yes, we but mean you, come back. These, come back. Yeah, you can either first time or come back. Um, Lady Gaga, number two. Um, I'd love to see that. It's a great choice. And then your number one pick, no surprises here, was Darren Chris. She's so, not shocked. No. But not he's shocked. wonderful, and we'd love to see him back on yeah. Broadway. Absolutely. Of course, come back, Darren. We know you watch every day. Hi, Absolutely. Darren. <laughs> um, hey, listen to this. Okay, there's a concert. Are you ready for this? I, I'm very You're ready. You're so ready for this. It's Woman of the Year. And, of course, that's Peter Stone, Candor, and Ebb, that musical. Uh, listen to who's going to be in it. Joyce DeWitt. Love Joyce. Julia Murney. And Eve Plum, to name a few. So that's a one-night concert. This is a 1981 musical, November 29th. It will take place twice at 7 and 9.30 at Feinstein. They love Slash, that. They love that. Below. Two they opportunities they to see. It. <laughs> they love a two-show night, don't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. Also will feature Anita Gillette, Christine Toy Johnson, Luba Mason, Christine Petty, Robert Cuccioli, Bradley Dean, Brad Oscar, and Kevin Zeck. I mean, come on, you guys. This is a great cast. Um, oh, do you need to know I, about I it? I mean, I put it down because okay, I didn't know. It follows the relationship know. between television news personality Tess Harding and cartoonist Sam Craig. I didn't know. I'm just I, Joyce DeWitt, Eve Plum. Love, yeah, What's absolutely. happening? I mean, all Robert Cuccioli. Yeah, a lot of good people. Wonderful people good people. Um, Megan Hilty, speaking of good concerts. People. Yeah, and good people. <laughs> Megan Hilty is going to be performing with the New York Pops at Carnegie Hall for two holiday concerts that are entitled The Most Wonderful Time of the Year because it is. Um, and she will be performing songs from her holiday album, which is titled A Merry Little Christmas. And this is happening December 15th and the 16th at 8 p.m. at Carnegie Hall. And uh, Hilti and the New York Pops Orchestra will be joined by Judith Clerman's Essential Voices USA Choir. Do we know what that is? I do not. Okay. But I'm going to. Google it, yeah. people. Why are we supposed to give you everything? Figure it out. <laughs> uh, a couple of other things on the site that you might be interested in checking out. There's a new trailer for The Greatest Showman, and that is the P.T. Barnum musical that features songs from the Dear Evan Hansen composers, Benj Pasek and Justin Paul. It's got Hugh Jackman, Kiala Settle, Zach Efron. You're really bearing Hugh Jackman on that. It should have started with Hugh yes. Jackman. <laughs> well, Just saying. You know, uh, that comes out December 20th and 
theaters. There's a new trailer, and you can get your first look at production photos of Once on This Island. So excited. Very excited. So excited. And that's it. And All right, so we will be right back with Marsha Stephanie Blake, so do not go away. winner all across North America. This stirring and inspiring musical takes you to a place you never want to leave. Celebrate the best of humankind and the best in all of us at Come From Away, the remarkable true story of the small town that welcomed the world. For Carol King, finding the top of the charts was easy. Finding her own voice was beautiful. Beautiful, the Carol King musical. Welcome back. I'm Beth Stevens. This is Live at 5, and I'm here with Marsha Stephanie Blake hey. of Stuffed at the West Side <laughs> oh, Theater. Thank, thank you, you, ladies thank and gentlemen. You. Thank you. Okay, we need to clear something up before we even get started okay. with Stuffed. I'm going to call you Marsha Stephanie. That's fine. Is that correct? Yeah. We have a hi, Marsha, and we have a hi, Stephanie. Oh, Okay. It happens a lot, no? So, uh, well, it depends on where in my life you met me. Like, if you met but me. But do you prefer two names? I mean, I'm, name? I'm a two-name person. I'm That's a two-namer. And actually, it rolls off your tongue really e easily once you get used to it. Marsha Stephanie. Marsha Stephanie. Yeah. Like, if you went up to Mary Louise Parker and said, hey, Mary, she, I don't know, but you get a response. You know what I'm saying? It's no. Like, you're not she, Marcia. I don't know who that you're Marcia is. Stephanie. Marsha Stephanie. Yeah. MSB. You That's fine. I love MSB. that, too. I, I mean, it. I like yeah. it. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. You have been in about a million off-Broadway shows. Yes. At least 13 or 14. I, I, I you lost, lost count. count. Yeah, because then it ages you and I'm really Oh, yeah, no, 14. no. About, we don't have to get into the details. <laughs> You've done so much stage work. You've done yeah. so much TV work and, and homework. And now you're doing stuffed. But everybody knows you from Orange is the New Black. Everybody? Like, yeah, kind of. Because you have a lot of attitude in Orange is the New Black, which I, I really know. like. Thank you. Um, but let's talk about stuffed. Yeah. West Side Theater. Yeah. Lisa Lampanelli. Lisa Lampanelli. Telling the stories, women and their bodies. Well, you know, sometimes people say it's a show for women or about women, and honestly, it's a show about anybody and their bodies. It's a show Human about beings food. and their bodies. Food. Food. It's about, yeah, <laughs> like I mean, that. we all eat. Um, yeah, it's about, it's about food. It's about eating disorders, and it's about the love of food, and it's about how funny food can be and sort of also how devastating. <laughs> there are a lot of relationships with food in this yes, show. Yes, yes. It I, does star for women, but it's yeah, not a show right. for it's only a, women. It's a show for everyone, and it it's closes this everyone. Sunday, unfortunately. It closes this Sunday. But <laughs> that means you have a week to like grab yeah. your tickets. Come on, people. That's right. That's right. Get them now. Are you having fun? I'm having the best time. I was a huge fan of Lisa's before this, um, which is kind of why. She doesn't know, but that's why I took the job. <laughs> you took um, the job I did, because I was such a big fan of hers. I thought her comedy was so hilarious and so irreverent and raw and silly and just ridiculous. Um, and, and she's honest. so ballsy and honest and all the things I want to be in my life. Um, and yeah, she's so much fun and, and such a great collaborator and all the things you wish for. And also the show is like, I mean, before this, the last off-Broadway show I did was Othello. So in I terms mean, of range, you know what I yeah, mean? Like I was like, I don't really, I wasn't really looking for something that I got killed at at the end by my <laughs> husband again. You know, I was looking for something a little maybe lighter so I could go home to my children and not want to hurt well, myself. I think I was reading something that uh, Lisa did an interview and she said that the theater community can be kind of snooty, but they were accepting her because Aww. she is just being herself. Yeah, she's. And someone great. says something about Shakespeare and she's like, I don't even know her. 
<laughs> that sounds exactly like so there you go she pretends mm -hmm. like she doesn't know a lot about she's she, always been a theater she fan. is so super smart she's a huge theater fan she knows everything she actually went to Yale. a lot of people don't know this she went to yale for acting uh -huh. to prepare Coming herself i know because my friend actually was one of her teachers oh, wow. to prepare herself for doing this so she takes it a lot more seriously than, than she pretends to yeah she actually she's good enough yeah, but she's not. She's I mean, not. she's completely, she's everything you want to be. She's, she doesn't take it so seriously that you can't, you know, make fun of the work. But also, she takes it seriously enough that, like, you know, you're at your work and you've got to, you know, put as much effort to, into it as you would anything else. So. Okay, let's talk about your background a little bit. And then we'll yeah. get to your questions. Don't worry, we will get to your questions. You did not start off as an actor, is that right? No. New. New. Who new does? you did not. No. I hate does. those people who are like, I knew I wanted to act when I was three years old. There are a lot of people that sit in that chair that say that. I don't really that. hate them. I'm just jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just jealous. So you were at Dartmouth. You were pre-med. I was pre-med, yeah. So that must have sucked. No, it was <laughs> great. Kidding. No, you know what happened? I was, I was like comfortably pre-med, sort of, and then I really got a little great on organic chemistry. Uh, but then my sister became a doctor. So then the pressure, the pressure was off. off. <laughs> and I was like, I could probably not have to be a doctor. And so you just need one per family. You don't need to everyone yeah, to be a doctor. You know what I'm saying? For real. <laughs> like, and so then what I, happened? I just, somebody asked me to be in a play because there weren't enough black people. <laughs> oh my God, what? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they were doing a James Baldwin play, and there weren't enough black people for so Blacktown because there's who picked that play if they didn't have enough people to. Be, okay, it doesn't matter. It's not my. It's, it's not my a issue. longer story than we have time for. <laughs> but they had literally in the play there's White Town and Black Town, and they had plenty of white people for White Town because we were at Dartmouth, <laughs> but they didn't have enough black people for Black Town. And so someone, they went scouting. They went scouting, and they I was in an acting class because I I taken it for the A, you know. That's what Easy you do. Egg. That's what you do when you're in pre med. Um, <laughs> and they, I was, I think, one of two black people in that acting class, and they asked both of us if we wanted to be in a play, <laughs> in like the official play of the year. And we wow. both said yes. And I did get an A, and I had one <laughs> line, and it was awesome. You had one awesome line, or you were awesome doing your one line, or both? Oh, no, I was horrible at my one line. <laughs> I had a lot of fun, and then I, of course, I did I did other plays and, and more and more and more. you slowly let go of the organic chemistry. I had to. I got a D. I'd never gotten a D in my <gasps> entire life. Shocked. It's all coming I out. I know. It was traumatizing. So you've been in a lot of shows. Mm -hmm. You've been in a lot of TV shows as well. Mm -hmm. What are you most recognized for when people Orange, have called you? Orange, probably. That's yeah. why I said that. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Even though I looked different in every single scene in Orange. You had a I lot had of hair. I had a lot of different hair. Uh, it, it became a big joke. But uh, yeah, Orange, because everybody watches that show. That show is it's true. global. Yeah. Global. Speaking global. of which, we have people watching from Denmark. What? what else did I say? Dublin. Only places that are D's. Who people. should we take? Let's yeah. take Denmark. Denmark. Hello, Do Denmark. you have a question, Denmark? Denmark, please. Please ask your question. Um, someone is saying, "Would you, Alex is saying, would you like to do a show on Broadway? Well, of course you have. I've done shows on Broadway, Alex. You yeah. don't Did know you me. Did you not know about Merchant of Venice? <laughs> I've done. Uh, with Jesse Pleasure. L. Martin. Oh, yes. You were I so great. Him. Thanks. I when you said him. that you took um, stuff because you were a fan of Lisa Lampanelli, yes. there were so many people to be fans of in Merchant of Venice. Al Pacino, for example. Who? Who? I don't no. know. I've never heard of him. <laughs> um, what was that experience like for you? Oh, my God. It was surreal. I had just given birth to a small child. That's good. A that it was human. A small one. <laughs> my first human. And I got this big play. I, I I I don't remember the first few months, honestly. And then there was a lot of people holding up um Scarface dolls sometimes in the audience. <laughs> oh, wow. And then Al would be like swamped at the at the door and they'd forget about the rest of us because we weren't Al Pacino. So we That's would true. almost get killed at the stage door. <laughs> um what was that audition process like? Were you pregnant when you auditioned? No, no, no. Okay. I had, I had, I think maybe just given birth, like maybe a month out. What? Um, a month? I don't think I was even standing up and moving around. Oh, no, I was, I, were ready. I was ready to go. I am, <laughs> I do not sit still for long. Um, uh, I think they had done it in the park, right? Right. And they needed to replace um, my character, Narissa, because the woman was leaving. 
and honestly, I think a, a, a big part of it, not to downplay myself, because I am fantastic, <laughs> but I think a big part of it was that I fit in her dress, guys. <laughs> Never not, underestimate fitting into someone's listen, costume. I think I was around the same size she was. <laughs> it just worked. <laughs> it worked out. But you, ha you were funny. You, ha okay. you were funny in that show. I, you were a lady in waiting. Yes. A gentlewoman. A gentlewoman, <laughs> as I am known. But that wasn't your first time life. on Broadway. What was your first time no, on Broadway? You were my understudy. I under, I understudied. You guys just talk about Kristen Bell. I was in um, the Crucible with her. We were both understudy. She had a line, and oh. so she was on stage. But I was. This is the Crucible with Laura Linney and Liam, and Liam Neeson. Neeson. That was a good one. That was my first, first Broadway play right out of school. Did you go on? I didn't go on. Um, I wanted to really badly, Did you get to take a didn't. curtain call on opening night or anything? I did. I mean, they involved us. The, the, the that We were treated, the understudies in that show, um, were, we went everywhere and did everything with the cast. So I never felt like I wasn't a part of And you of did things. the big, is it called the big C? The, what is it I called? I did the big C. But was that before with or Laura? after with Laura? That was after, oh. after, many years was after. she like, were yeah. you an understudy on that play I did? Was she like that? No, <laughs> you know, I, I was on uh, set the same time as John Benjamin Hickey, because he mm -hmm. was in the big C also, I think, playing her brother, maybe? I think that's right, yeah. Um, and he, I stayed in touch with him, so he kind of had to <laughs> remind Laura who I was. <laughs> <laughs> Little elbow. But she, there was no reason for her to, like, really remember me. It was so many years ago. Um, but that was a great, great cast. That was my first play, and then I did. And that was the last Crucible where Arthur Miller was alive and was there around, yes, right? Yes. Yeah. Was he in rehearsal yeah. with you guys? He was there a couple of times, I want to say. Um, again, vague, vague. I know this memories. is a long. Like, it was like 15 years ago. Not, to, not, uh, to not. Say I mean, I mean, five uh, to ten months uh, ago. I don't. Right. Or something. What? Like <laughs> what? Um, okay, I'm gonna yes. ask more questions. More Alex questions. says, any dream roles? Dream roles. I mean, you can do anything. Oh, you've man. done a lot of new work. I, you've done you a lot know, of classic work. I don't know. Like, I would love to do something uh, where the person wasn't. This is why I love stuffed. To bring it back around to stuffed, um, where the person wasn't uh, uh, downtrodden. <laughs> I'm always playing That's someone not play for a long time, and this is not funny. But for a long, for a good stretch, like a good six year stretch. Every character I had, I played, had a dead child. What? Like somebody who was dying or already dead or every character. And I was just like, Rah! which is why stuffed is such a nice relief for me. Interesting to talk about food. It's a lot easier. Yeah, you talk about food. You talk about like, you know, Apple Jacks. That's <laughs> being silly and Lisa That's not cool. Calls How do you leave that? How do you leave name. that at work? That stuff. It's hard. It's hard. It, and it gets harder when you have kids, I think. Um, at least for me, it did. I, it's, it's a little bit, um, I can never, it's hard to talk to people at the stage door, you know. It's just harder. Have you, have your kids seen your performances? Some. But because of the nature of the things I have been known I for. I was going to say. I usually keep them away. Um, I did not the kid-friendly stuff. You mm. haven't done that so much. I haven't, no. Like, I did the Scottish play last year, and I would just bring my kids to Fight Call. <laughs> and <laughs> my youngest, who was two at the time, um, started hitting her sister. And then when I said... She had her own Fight I, Call. Yeah, when I said, mm -hmm. what, what are you doing? Like, where does this come from? She would just say, you hit Jonathan, Oops. because she saw me hit the actor Jonathan in Fight Call. So but you yeah, weren't I, real, I keep well, him away. But she didn't know that. Uh -huh. She was like, listen. Acting. Yeah. <laughs> Acting. You have to go to school for this first. I mean, <laughs> she was like, listen, I see you hit a dude every day. Okay, yeah, don't hit people. Uh, someone's asking, do you sing? And then no, says, oh my God, no, sing. I'm the one black person on Broadway There's who doesn't one. sing, I'm sorry. Only one people. I apologize to all the... Would you ever perform in Chicago? They just want you to come on. You're global. I did Chicago PD. That's true. I That's have, close enough. I have performed in Chicago. It's too cold. I'll perform in Chicago in the summer. <laughs> um, Stephanie's asking, what's the best route to theater acting? How do you get there? Go to Dartmouth and be, be pre-med. <laughs> and then... And if there's a James Baldwin play. If you're black. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is the path, people. This will work <laughs> every time. <laughs> I love your necklace, by the way. Well, there are two, but Thank one you. I can see says woke. I have woke and I have black girl magic. Oh, I like that. You know. 
That's very specialized, though. Like, I don't my think friends, I can wear. My friend makes them. I couldn't them. do that. But that I was wear cool. Them all day long. All right, let's talk about stuff some more. Yes. Let's talk about it. How many people are in this play? Four. What are the different approaches you're seeing? Uh, so Lisa's character is Lisa, a woman Easy. who had... She's been studying for it for a while. Right. She was, you know, overweight. She had bari bariatric surgery. Um, and she has sort of a funny, light, sometimes light, um, irreverent approach to everything. Um, my character is a woman who no one believes exists, but actually does because Lisa based these all on real people. So your woman, my woman, cannot put on weight. Cannot gain weight. We love that. Yeah, that makes women really happy. To hear about I know. That. Every time <laughs> I come out and I say it, I see half the audience uh, roll their eyes at me. <laughs> but it is true. And in fact, I was a child who couldn't gain weight. My father constantly thought I had some kind of a tapeworm situation. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't gain weight. No matter what I ate. I think that's a line from the play. I think okay. I just said a line. Anyway. Oh, well, um, it happens. If it's real, it's real. It's real. Mm -hmm. And these are real interviews that she did, that Lisa did. And then there's a woman who's anorexic, bulimic. And then there's another woman who is a woman who is beautiful and lovely and luxuriously loves her body, loves her body and is very curvy. And that, those women exist, too, by the way. She also gets the eye rolls. We're both the are two you like of in us. competition for eye roll. Yeah, the two of us are. Pe you know, they don't. Are you getting eye rolls from Lisa? We're getting eye rolls from everybody. Okay. <laughs> Just everybody clarify that. Yeah. Okay. Michael's asked. Oh, we've got some. You guys are asking deep questions. It's oh, like a deep no. question Monday. What? This is not light. But Stuff but that's light. You can handle it. You can handle it. Michael asks, "What's been your biggest challenge in life? Or I in don't my know. Career? I'm not." I'm not uh, in life, interpreting the I mean, it probably is the same in life and my career. It's like raising kids. I mean, I it's don't a know. hard it's balance, just right? Daunting. I don't know what I'm doing. I keep waiting for their mom to show up. How's that going? She well, has not all, shown up if yet. If she does, you're gonna freak <laughs> yeah, out. I'm gonna be like, so what? Don't, don't say that. <laughs> that's thought, not. That's not a true fact, right mine. there. That's not real. <sighs> and <laughs> Stephanie says, "What influences your characters?" Now, that's a big question because it depends what you're doing. Uh, but how do you do influences. research? Do you do like backstories? Do you work on your? I do, I do because I yeah I'm still I still haven't figured out how to act. So um, uh, good thing they keep booking you though. It's <laughs> ridiculous. They don't really know that I'm a doctor. <laughs> um, I I do a lot of research. I watch a lot of things. What's great now is that in this age where you don't have to go to the library, like I used to go and do research in a library. You guys, how corny is that? But now you could like find so what many things. What is a library? People, Please tell. I'm just kidding. Guys, a library is no. Um, so now you can just look up anything online. You could just, in fact, um, recently I put in men with eating disorders because I wanted to make sure that men know that there oh, are there's men out like there 20 with subreddits disorder. on that. No? And I, 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 all the stats came up and all of that. Um, but yeah, you could like Google, Google anything. What are you doing post stuffed? I don't know. It's weird that it'll be Thanksgiving. It'll be Thanksgiving. And Which I'm seems like a good time to see stuff, but whatever. Right? I'm just saying. Speaking of. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. This is the, sort of the wonderful thing about being an actor is sometimes. <laughs> you have to figure it out. You have to, like, just wait. But you have your two girls. I have two children. I'm always doing something. Um, and Are you going to uh, let them be actors? There's some things in the works. Am mm -hmm. I going to let them be actors? I want to say it like that. Because I feel like you'd have um, a strong opinion. I, if I had a choice, I would say no. But <laughs> I have a feeling I will have no control over it. But yeah, it's 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 kind of a crazy. Business. Do they like the theater? Do they, they love it? They, they do. Oh my god, they love it. Yeah, I know it's tragic, but that's what they live it's there. Tragic. They live backstage with me most of the time, so of course they love it. You know, and it's a lot more exciting than what their dad does. So. What does their dad do? He's a photographer, which That's is not like unexciting. It's not, but you know, like no one claps when you take a photo. <laughs> People don't stop him on the street and tell him no. that they binge watched him. No, no one's binge watched a photographer. <laughs> All right, so you're the cool parent. I got it. That's right. I got it. All right, listen. That's what I tell myself. You guys, go to the West Side Theater. Do go it the soon. Do not put this off. Go see Marsha Stephanie Blake. Call her Marsha Stephanie Blake if you can. One week left. One week left until Sunday, 
see Lisa Lampanelli. Very funny show. She is and so deep. good, you guys. She's Lisa good. Lisa is so good. The and rest of us are great. Lisa is like she's remarkably. Fine. She's, she's, she's managing like, okay. it. <laughs> yeah. And we will see you back here tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Bye.